Good evening, I'm Zoranda Sanford. And I'm Eddie Hamilton. Here's what's coming up next on Panther Vision. The Student Association is forced to postpone their election indefinitely. We'll tell you why. And don't be surprised if you see this group of innovative performers outside your classroom. April means baseball. We follow several UWM students willing to take the day off for opening day. All this and more coming up on Panther Vision. From the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, this is UWM Panther Vision. A weekly newscast reported, written, and produced by students in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication. And now, the news. Another student association election, another controversy. The university student court has canceled the election until further notice. At issue is a new online voting system. PantherVision's Erica Guthner has the story. The new online voting system was supposed to make the student election more straightforward and effortless for UWM voters. We've been wanting to, to transform and make our elections more accessible for a long time, and I think online is, is one of the right ways to do that. Instead, the Student Association's first attempt at a completely digital balloting system contained flaws. Each student received an email with two independent links to the ballot, allowing each student to vote twice. Um, essentially further, um, students, once they did vote, could delete the cookies that are stored on their internet and vote again. The Independent Elections Commission was in charge of hiring a company that would set up the online system. Elections Commissioner Sarah Haskell says the UWM testing center was the most viable option. With the best that I could do and the budget that they gave me, we fit, researched them and we thought the testing center would be the best choice because they could do it. In the, they claimed that they could do it in the time that um, we needed and that they're in our price range. Panther Vision tried contacting the testing center about the problem but did not get a response. Haskell is now under fire from some senators for making the decision to go with the testing center and decided to take uh, the responsibility on herself to move forward without, um, without consulting the commission as she's required to do in the bylaws. Those same bylaws require that essay elections be held in April, whether it be online or paper ballots. In Milwaukee, I'm Erica Gunther for Panther Vision. At an emergency essay meeting on Sunday, the Student Senate passed two resolutions. A vote of no confidence was passed and Sarah Haskell was let go from her position as IEC. The Senate, the Senate has rescheduled the elections for April 20th through the 22nd. A replacement online voting system is being developed, but this time a paper ballot will be developed as a backup. This isn't the first time the Student Association has experienced problems with annual elections. Ryan Murray continues our team coverage with a look at the polling problems that have plagued the Student Association. Every essay election since 2006 has seen some sort of controversy. In 2006, Chris Larson and the MKE party got tossed off the ballot because of a simple paperwork error. Small thing in the lower left hand corner that's about that big um, did not appear on the signature sheets when we turned them in. Larson was forced to campaign as a write-in candidate. The following year, candidates Carlos Albano and Albulana Shabani petitioned to have the election results tossed out. Albano claimed that not all the votes cast were accounted for. There are 523 votes that are somewhere. We oh, okay. demand right now to know where these 523 votes are. 2008's elections caused a swarm of controversy. Candidates from the Achieving Student Action Through Progress Party, or ASAP, removed from the ballot by Independent Election Commissioner Dan Barr, citing too many campaign violations. Barr also took issue with media coverage of the elections from both the UWM Post and Panther Vision. This is a big story. This is serious stuff. Look, I, you know, I stand by all my rulings. I really have, you know, I don't have any comments on that. Barr even attempted to ban Panther Vision cameras from the violation hearing. I'm not going to be allowing cameras in this series. Citing what he referred to as unprofessional well, conduct. I'm not impressed with your conduct recently. I'm just not going to be allowing it. And last year, controversy arose when Barr was again appointed as IEC. Barr was unable to perform the duties of the IEC's office, forcing him to appoint former SA president Rob Grover as the chief deputy IEC. Grover then ran the election. 
Ryan joins us now. So Ryan, why was last year's appointment of Rob Grover an issue? It's one of those things you kind of have to follow the bouncing ball around a little bit. Uh, first, the Senate voted down Rob uh, Grover's appointment, so the existing election commissioner, Dan Barr, had to remain in office. Uh, but Barr was working out in Madison for the uh, Wisconsin Assembly and was unable to perform the duties of his job. So he had to appoint a local representative to take his place, and that's where Grover came into the picture. Um, did Barr explain why he appointed Grover? Yes, both Barr and then SA President Tyler Dreheim both felt that, that Grover was the right candidate for the job. He'd already been SA President, and it was thought that he was going to have the best chance of running a very fair election. And really, when he took over, uh, the election ended up being run very fair. Thanks, Ryan. A rare opportunity leads to a heated debate. It happened during a broadcast club at UWM program, Ask the Chancellor. One of the student guests challenged Chancellor Carlos Santiago on the cost of online classes. Every system, as convenient as people may find it, is more expensive for us to deliver. Uh, but it does save on some, uh, some things like space. Uh, it, it is a, a space uh, uh, sort of uh, improver for, for what we're trying to do. But it is very expensive. The technology and the faculty members' time is the, the highest cost in, in that delivery system. I guess I, I'm having mm, maybe a bit of a misunderstanding. I talked with some deans. Uh, and they said, you know, this is actually a really low-cost way to deliver education. I would love to know who those deans are because I tell you, they don't know what they're talking about. It is an expensive delivery system, and you know who you need to talk to. Talk to the faculty member. Talk to the person who's teaching the class, the person who had to learn how to deliver that particular medium. Many classes I have on campus use D2L, and my online courses use D2L as well. It's the exact same uh, delivery system. Uh, I don't understand how... It's, it's the time commitment that faculty uh, require. It's the training that goes into it. It's, it's the, the technology itself. That... For a three-credit general education course, UWM charges $275 extra per online course. We did the math, and UWM ranks number one in the UW system for highest online course fees. At La Crosse, students are charged with $225 per online class. Whitewater and Oshkosh charge $150. At Stevens Point, students pay $60, and Eau Claire is $30. Some schools like UW-Superior and UW-Green Bay don't charge segregated fees to online students. That means that online classes at those schools actually save students upwards of $52 per course. First, there was Sandberg, followed by Kenilworth and Riverview. UWM has been expanding the number of residence halls on campus to meet student demand. And this fall, there will be one more. Panther Vision's Andy Ambrosius has the story. As UWM's population grows, so will the areas to live on campus. Meet the Cambridge Commons, or what will soon become the Cambridge Commons. As of now, it looks like this, still under construction, but scheduled to open in the fall. The new facility mirrors Riverview Residence Hall, and both are nearly two miles from campus. But University Housing Director Scott Peake defends the decision to move the dorms off-site. You know, some students, some parents have, have questioned, well, we're building these residence halls that are a mile away. Well, if we put our campus on and in, in, in overlay maps of other larger urban institutions over on our blocks that we have, um, having residence halls spread between campuses are not unusual. Peek says the university is in the process of buying several more shuttle buses to bring students to campus, and that may be necessary. After opening, the Cambridge Commons will be the second most populated residence hall at UWM, housing 700 students. However, some students may not mind living far from classes. The new facility sports amenities not seen in other halls. These rooms at the Cambridge Commons will be larger than other dorms and some will even have furnished living rooms. The hall also prides itself on eco-friendliness. It will have two green roofs, a solar roof, and a rain garden. Yet some students still say they'd like to have seen the money spent elsewhere, like freshman Shelby Royce. I think like my main issue is I wish they had more parking, so maybe they should focus on more parking structures than more dorm buildings. But the need for housing continues to grow, so Cambridge Commons are coming soon. In Milwaukee, I'm Andy Ambrosius for Panther Vision. 
Scott Peak says university housing is aiming for a gold rank in eco-efficiency. If accomplished, it will be the first building on campus to meet the high standard. He also says administrators are looking for new sites for residence halls. UWM School of Freshwater Sciences may now have two homes. The existing Great Lakes Water Institute, which uses the research vessel, vessel Niske, would house the teaching and research site of the new school. Administrative offices would be housed in the new site called the Reed Street Yards. That site is on the Menominee River near the Harley Davidson Museum. An initial plan to house the new school at the old Pieces of Eight restaurant has been scrapped. The school hopes to offer graduate level courses for water scientists and engineers this fall. It would use the existing buildings until the new school is ready. Chancellor Santiago has some big changes in store for UWM, but none of them include him leaving the university. Santiago recently withdrew his candidacy for president at Drexel University. After being named a finalist for the position, the chancellor says he gets a few job inquiries every month, but the one at Drexel needed some thought. One of the top reasons for the withdrawal, unfinished initiatives that he says he, plan he plans on finishing at UWM. The candidates for Wisconsin governor are checking UWM off their list of campaign stops. The UWM Panther advocates invited three of the candidates to speak at the university on separate occasions. Mark Newman and Scott Walker both made appearances last week. Mayor Tom Barrett is the final candidate. He will be appearing at the Fireside Lounge on uh, May 3rd from noon to 1 p.m. With the midterms over and finals to go, students are feeling the pressure to finish the semester on a high note. April is Stress Awareness Month, and as Panther Vision's Carly Kappel reports, students can get help on campus. As the spring semester is winding down, students are feeling the heat not just from the rising temperatures, but also from increasing stress levels as exams approach. And Nick Nadolski is no different, but he's looking at the bright side of things. Even if like you're about to have an awful day, seeing the sun in the morning is like, at least you know that it's gonna be okay. You know, like it's all good. Nick is a UWM marketing major who has a busy schedule like many college students. So I'm either at school during the day or work at night or in reverse. Um, I don't have a lot of time. Nick is your average stressed out student, but is he aware there are resources on campus to lend a helping hand? Um, I'm not actually. Um, I didn't really know. I... And he's not alone. April is Stress Awareness Month, and by the end of the semester, students are very aware of their stress. The Norris Health Center is a great place to go to get tips to stay cool under pressure. Health educator Sarah Bellstock counsels students, like Nick, about stress management. Facing the beast, so figuring out what exactly is the source of stress. I think sometimes they're really obvious, like an approaching exam, but sometimes I think there's more subtle things in our lives, like our relationships, that might be causing us stress. And Sarah is not the only one who can give sound advice. Feeling rested, I find, is like the best thing you could possibly do. No one likes to do anything when you're tired. Take a step toward managing your stress, because with work and school, Students are always in the fast lane. In Milwaukee, I'm Carly Kappel for Panther Vision. Coming up on Panther Vision, find out what new cutting edge device has students lining up to be the first on the block. And some students talk with their hands, but that doesn't hold them back. All this and more coming up next on Panther Vision. Thanks for watching UWM Panther Vision, Judge Best Student Newscast by the Northwest Broadcast News Association. Panther Vision is produced by students in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication in association with Milwaukee Area Technical College.
Welcome back. The wait is over for some techies. And as Adeline Guajardo reports, people can't wait to get their hands on the latest gadget. The line grew longer as the clock ticked closer to nine. I was here at 6.15 and eight people. Anticipation grew as the curtains came down. The moment has finally arrived for these eager fans to get their hands on the newest Apple gadget. With the launch of the iPad, Apple looks to take reading to a new level. I'm just looking forward to reading on it mainly. Not just novels and newspapers though. Apple wants textbook publishers to get in on the action. Right now we know the textbook costs are going incredibly high. There's a cycle that's driving them higher and higher and higher. And everyone's looking for ways to get around that. This may be one way. The iPad isn't creating excitement for all. Some professors are laying the law in their classrooms by banning laptops and other electronics to avoid distraction. Air Keming doesn't agree. For eons, people who have either been sleeping in classes or whispering to one another in classes or writing notes in classes. Now we have a, a laptop which provides us the opportunity of doing a number of different things. We can converse with our friends, we can watch movies, we can write notes, we can um, converse. I mean, any number of things can go on with, with a laptop. Is that necessarily a bad thing? Only time will tell whether Apple's step forward in technology will be fully accepted at UWM and other universities. In Milwaukee, I'm Adeline Guajardo for Panther Vision. As of now, there are anywhere from 750,000 to 1 million low-cost or free textbooks available to download. The UWM Helen Badar School of Social Welfare is the winner of a prestigious national award. The school is the recipient of the Academic Excellence Award from the American Public Human Services Association. The award recognizes the school's efforts on behalf of children and families. Two Milwaukee College students hope that a UWM event helps spread a message. And as I found out, just like a picture, a pair of hands is worth a thousand words. A lot of people meet their friends on spring break. We're here just to hang out and, and see friends and, and sort of chat it up. But not the type of conversation you can hear. Luke uses words and his hands to communicate. I've been studying ASL intensively for maybe uh, about a year, actually. Um, my grandmother-in-law is deaf, and so when I started uh, dating my wife, we uh, we learned together, and I you know, wanted to snatch that opportunity and, and start learning some sign. Luke is at the Deaf Awareness Forum at UWM where something natural as communication unites two worlds. Hi, my name is Jeremiah. There are speakers, workshops, and even Miss Deaf Wisconsin. To me, it means exposure and awareness of that there are um, deaf people out there in the world. And not only expressed through their hands, but through their artwork as well. That a lot of hearing people don't understand that their deafness is actually a culture in and of itself. Um, and so it's, it's cool to give them that, that experience and exposure. Luke also says, unlike learning foreign language, to learn ASL, you have to think about pictures rather than words. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, this, or this, for example. This is a sign for nation, naturally, of course, that concept. And so you have to analyze the, con the context of what's being signed and see, okay, do they mean this, do they mean that? Not quite your ordinary spring break. In Milwaukee, I'm Eddie Hamilton for Panther Vision. DEAF is actually an acronym that stands for the Deaf Exposure Awareness Forum. The event provides an opportunity to participate in deaf culture at UWM. The weather was quite lovely this weekend. Oh yeah, it was pretty <laughs> sunny. Is it uh, going to keep going, Kyle? Well, actually, uh, we do have a little bit of rain in the forecast, but you're right, it was an absolute wonderful weekend. Well, they call you a weather geek if you're excited for rain. Well, I'm excited for rain, so we'll just leave it at that. But let's take a look then before we get to that, at what's going on right now. Currently we're looking at about 50 degrees with the dew point about 34. Barometric pressure holding steady right around 30 inches or so. Um, so it's not too bad out. And then for the rest of the day, well, let's take a look. 60 degrees for a high with the low probably right around 47, but we are looking at partly cloudy uh, skies for the rest of the afternoon. And then into this evening, we are gonna be looking at a chance, about 30% chance of rain coming in. But Let's take a look first at what we uh, had this morning. That lake temperature definitely was keeping us a little bit cooler 
right along the uh, shorelines of, Mich of Lake Michigan. Inland a little bit more though, La Crosse coming in at 42 degrees. And then Eau Claire, 39. Rhinelander still a little bit chilly up north with the uh, 33 degrees up there. That cold air mass coming way in or staying up north. There is some warm, uh, a warm air mass pressure or warm air mass down to our south. Uh, across the state, looking at 69 degrees all the way on the uh, western coast or the western shores of the Mississippi River. La Crosse, 69 degrees. Eau Claire, 62. Rhinelander, 56. Again, staying a little bit cooler up to our north. Milwaukee, however, 60 degrees. That lake is going to keep us a little bit cooler. The wind's coming just a little bit off of the uh, lake. Not too bad, though. Oshkosh, 63, and Green Bay, 61. And let's take a look at the rest of our forecast. Tonight, we're looking at mostly cloudy. Again, a chance of rain, probably about a 30% chance, 47 degrees for the overnight. Winds coming up about 10 miles per hour up the southeast. And then tomorrow, mostly cloudy, 58 degrees, with a low about 45. And then Wednesday, here it comes, partly sunny, warm, warm weather coming up, 70 degrees, a little bit breezy, 5 to 10 miles an hour of the wind from the south-southwest. And then Thursday, even a little bit warmer, 72 degrees, but that's when we're looking at those, the chance, or actually a very good chance of thunderstorms. But, as I said before, rain and thunderstorms are exciting for people who really enjoy weather. Friday, that rain's going to stick around. Saturday, mostly sunny. Sunday, mostly sunny, and a high is right around 60 degrees, which is pretty normal for this time. Maybe a little bit above average, but not too bad. Um, so yeah, actually, not looking, or actually looking to be uh, not too bad of a week for the rest of the week, if you don't mind a little bit of rain. Hey, it beats mm -hmm. uh, 30 degrees in snow. Yes, it does. Rain, I will take rain any time over snow. Absolutely. That's a given. So. <laughs> Thanks, Cal. With the second semester in full swing, many people may be too busy to notice there has been a big change at MATC. Reporter James Stewart has more in this week's MATC report. There's a new face on campus. I sat down with Dr. Michael Burke to find out what he has in store for his new role as MATC president. Well, I've been president at MATC for two months now, I'm just beginning my third month. Uh, prior to that, I was president of San Jose City College, which is a large urban community college in the South Bay area, just about 45 miles south of San Francisco. Very large, very diverse student body. I um, had my doctoral degree from the, uh, my PhD from the Community College Leadership Program at the University of Texas at Austin. It, it's probably the best program of its kind in the country. Actually, I think it is the best program of its kind in the country. It focuses really on providing kind of unique skill set that community college uh, presidents need. Uh, their alumni are all over the United States, literally all over the world. It's an extraordinary program. Well, this is an amazing institution. I think uh, folks in Milwaukee probably take it for granted. Uh, it has a national reputation. I think I add value to the organization because I you know, I want to create the kind of collaboration with our, with really major segments of our community, obviously MPS, Milwaukee Public Schools, as well as the business community. I think obviously we need to be their human resources solution in here in Milwaukee, provide them the skilled workforce they need. With the MATC Report, I'm James Stewart for PantherVision. Coming up next on PantherVision, Find out what spring event keeps several students from making it to class. And we'll show you some performers who truly adapt to their surroundings.
Thanks for watching UWM Panther Vision, judged best student newscast by the Northwest Broadcast News Association. Panther Vision is produced by students in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication in association with Milwaukee Area Technical College. Welcome back. DeAndre Dossie is here with Panther Vision Sports. Every April, there's one day that leaves classrooms a little light on students. Panther Vision's Eric Lissheim found those students, found those missing students in a familiar place. It's the oh! and the and of course the that keeps fans coming back year after year. This is Miller Park. I mean, this is opening day. This is what we're supposed to be doing right now if you're in Milwaukee. Yes, every true Brewers fan did their best to make it to opening day, including UWM students. But what about class? Well, some students have found a more recreational way to spend this beautiful day. It may seem irresponsible to miss class for a baseball game, but one student did plan ahead. Yes, sir. Got my paper that was due. I uh, got my homework that's going to be able to be accepted at one on Wednesday instead of today. And for another, skipping class has already become its own pastime. And it's a way better cause than going to class because I don't go to class anyway. So what exactly are these students missing today? I'm skipping marketing today. I got a philosophy 211. I was supposed to be at my statistics discussion in lab, but I figure this is a better cause than uh, going to class today. It may not have been in a classroom, but believe it or not, some learning did take place here at Miller Park today. Tailgate cooking 101. I just had a, the best brat in my life. It's a brat, bacon, and sweet baby rays. In Milwaukee, I'm Eric Litzheim for Panther Vision. While it was a beautiful day for those who did skip class, the Brewers lost to the Colorado Rockies 5-3. Unlike the Brewers, the Panther baseball team is riding a doubleheader victory. The Panthers took the field Friday in non-conference action. The Panther bats were hot in this first game. They scored 12 runs in two innings and beat Wisconsin Lutheran 17-4. The second game was close for a while, with the Green Knights of St. Norbert College staying in the, through the fifth inning. But the UWM bats responded, putting three, home, putting three runs in the bottom of the sixth and adding another five in the seventh, ending in a 14-4 win. Led by senior Tim Passman, the Brewers ended the day with 31 runs on 26 hits. Passman went four for six, driving in eight, and extending his hitting streak to nine games. The wins extended UWM's home winning streak to 20. The UWM Lady Panthers tennis team ended their season with a pair of disappointing home losses over the weekend. The Panthers dropped a 4-3 decision to UW Green Bay Friday night and a 4-3 decision to Detroit Sunday morning. Both matches saw the Panthers capture wins in doubles, but struggle in their singles matchups. The loss has knocked the Panthers out of the top six in the Horizon League and out of postseason play. That's all for sports. Back to Zaranda. Thanks, DeAndre. Some UWM students are dancing like nobody's watching, but maybe their dance moves aren't so secret. Panther Vision's Jeff View has the story. For some teams, practice takes place in a studio. Coaches and strict routines are common. But for another dance team, practice is a lot less formal. You know, just depending on who comes to, at certain times, uh, some people just come in spurts. Some... Here, anybody can teach. But your legs will stay Oh, business. Trying to get into business right now, so yeah. Twee Tran is still in school, but he already has started his own organization. Like, b-boying and b-girling is what the original term for like what what you see today is with unconventional moves comes an unconventional dance floor an atrium outside a lecture hall as a businessman he caters to his co-workers but take the mic off and they're all business in 2006 Twee Tran aka b-boy crumbles had an idea originally it was just gonna be like the, the five or six of us and then all of a sudden we just made like this big group over here. From that, Project Break was formed. 
But you know, like, it's just all about building yourself up and then trying to make your name out there, so. As I found out, oh! I won't be known for my dance skills anytime soon. In Milwaukee, I'm Jeff Yu for Panther Vision. Thanks for inviting us into your homes this evening. We leave you now with the sights and sounds of Project Break.